Good day, everyone, and welcome back to my virtual classroom. For our science discovery episode for today, we will be learning balancing chemical equations. So let's get started. Balancing chemical equations. Balancing a chemical equation is much like the work of an accountant who has to show every penny that comes in and where it has gone to. In this video, you will learn the steps to balancing chemical equation, take notes to help you understand, and test yourself with a set of equations to balance. You can never change a formula when balancing an equation. You can only put a number in front of a formula. This is what we call coefficient. So let's consider how to show two molecules of CO2. Would it be C2O or CO4? Or could it be C2O2? Or should it be 2CO2? Now, as I have mentioned, you can never change a formula. So therefore, amongst the given, the last option is exactly the same as CO2, which was the given. Therefore, this is the correct way of balancing a formula or a compound in an equation. In balancing chemical equations, you need to remember this law, the law of conservation of mass. This law states that the mass is neither created nor destroyed in any chemical reaction. Therefore, balancing of equations requires the same numbers of atoms on both sides of a chemical reaction. The number of atoms on the reactants must equal the number of atoms in the products. Because of the principles of the conservation of mass, an equation must be balanced. It must have the same number of atoms of the same kind on both sides. Also, the mass of all the reactants must equal the mass of the products. Now let's take for example, magnesium reacting with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Now, in balancing equation, the first thing that you need is the correct formula in an equation. Then, all you do is list the atoms that are involved on each side of the arrow. So, we have magnesium on both sides and oxygen on both sides. The next step is we can start balancing. But before we balance, we have to count the number of atoms on each side. So we have one magnesium on the reactant, one magnesium on the product, two oxygen on the reactant, and one oxygen on the product. Now please do take note that the subscript here would tell you how many of that element or atom you have. So if there are no subscript numbers, that is understood to be one. So one magnesium and one oxygen on the product side. And please do take note that when you balance, it's the whole formula. Therefore, if there is no number before your formula, that is understood that there is one. And that number is what we call a coefficient once again, and that will be multiplied to our subscript. So to make this balance equation, first is we have to multiply. So since we have two oxygen on the reactant side, we have to multiply the product side's oxygen by two. And since oxygen is with magnesium, that means it will also affect magnesium by two. So that means that we have to place two before magnesium oxide, making two magnesium and two oxygen on the product side. Now, since magnesium now is two and on the reactant side is only one, Therefore, we have to multiply the reactant side magnesium by 2 to make it 2. Then we place 2 as a coefficient. So therefore, we have 2 magnesium on both reactants and product and 2 oxygen on both reactants and product side. Then our chemical formula here, or chemical equation, is now balanced. Let's take another example. Now, if you deal a chemical equation where you have O2 on the reactant side, which is a combustion reaction, you have to balance oxygen last. For the reason, it is 
O2 only on the reactant side and it's easier to balance because it has no other atoms together with it. So the first step, what do we need to do is write all the atoms. We have nitrogen, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen on both sides. The next step is to write the number of atoms for each. We have one nitrogen on reactant, one on the product, we have three hydrogen on the reactant and two on the product and two oxygen on the reactant. And if you have oxygen that is being split into two formula, all you need to do is add. So one on NO and one on H2O, making it two. Now with this number, it's hydrogen that is not balanced. Therefore, we have to find the least common multiple for 3 and 2, which is 6. Therefore, we need to multiply 2 on the product side of hydrogen by 3 to make it 6. So we write 3 before H2O. And on the reactant side, we multiply it by 2 to make it 6. Making this multiplied by 2, 6. H2O, uh, 6 of your hydrogen as well. However, it has affected nitrogen, making nitrogen on the reactant side 2. And our oxygen on the product side is also being affected. We have 3 plus 1, making it 4. So as I have mentioned, we will balance oxygen last. So since there is two nitrogen on the reactant side, we have to multiply nitrogen on the product side by two to make it balance. So now we have two nitrogen on both reactant and product side. And that would change our oxygen to two plus three, which is five. Now, if you encounter an odd number on your product side for oxygen, all you have to do is multiply the reactant side's oxygen by the fraction 5 over 2 so that when you cancel this out, you will get a 5. So you write 5 over 2 on the reactant side. However, in balancing chemical equation or any form, fractions are not allowed because there are no fraction of an atom. So to get rid of the fraction that you have placed on your balanced equation, we have to multiply the whole thing by the denominator, which is 2, to make it balance. So then, this would be 2 times 2 on your NH3. This will give you 4. Let me just change the color. And then 5 over 2 times 2, that will cancel 2. That will give us only 5 here. And then we have 2 times 2 on our NO. That will give us 4. And then 2 times 3 on our H2O. That will give us 6. Let's try to check whether everything now has been balanced. So let me just erase this part to clear out and see whether it's now balanced in terms of number of atoms on both sides of the equation. So we start with nitrogen. We have four on the reactant side and four on the product side. And followed by hydrogen, we have 4 times 3, that will give us a 12, and 6 times 2, that will also give us a 12. And our last one is oxygen, 5 times 2, that will give us a 10, and 4 plus 6 will also be a 10. Therefore, this chemical equation is now balanced. Now it's your turn. Try the following by balancing the chemical equation.
all right so let's try to check first is you have to determine how many of each atom in the reactant and product side are present so you have one carbon on the reactant one carbon on the product two oxygens on the reactant and two on the product therefore this is already balanced the second equation we have two hydrogen let me just write it so that it will be easier and two hydrogen on the product side we have two oxygen on the reactant but only one on the product side so to balance oxygen we multiply this by two which would affect as well our H2 so if we place two here that will make our H2 four so we have to multiply our product side I mean reactant side by two as well to make it balance so you have two H2 plus O2 giving us two H2O let's proceed to the third example so we have nitrogen two on the reactant side one on the product side and hydrogen has two on the reactant side and three on the product side so to make this balance we multiply hydrogen by the least common multiple which is six so we multiply this by two to make it six and multiply this by three to make it six so multiplying this by two making hydrogen six and multiplying this by three making hydrogen six now this is affected n2 so times two which will make our nitrogen balanced as well so therefore that is already balanced now let's proceed to the last one we have carbon hydrogen and oxygen so carbon on the reactant side is one carbon on the product side is also one hydrogen on the reactant side is four hydrogen on the product is two and we have oxygen is two on the reactant and you have two plus one that will be a three so as i have mentioned if you encounter this type of reaction which is a combustion reaction you always balance the O2 on the reactant side or the oxygen in general as last. So to balance this, we need hydrogen times 2. So to multiply this, we have 2 here. That will also affect our oxygen. So balanced hydrogen, we have 4 and 4. We have 1 carbon and 1 carbon. That's all balanced. And leaving us with oxygen, which is... 2 in CO2 and 2 in H2O, that will be a 4. Now, if it is an even number, it's easy. So you just need to multiply the oxygen on the other side by 2 to make it 4. Therefore, it will be CH4 plus 2 of my O2, giving a product of CO2 and 2 of my H2O, and that will make our equation balanced. I hope that you have learned something from our episode for today. And for those that are new to my class, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for your attendance today. And as always, as teacher Maria would say, please do live your life to the fullest, learn something new every day, and love one another as how our God loves us. See you next episode for our science discoveries. Thank you. Bye.